Before the season started, I made my NBA award predictions, and five months later, they don't look too good, which is okay. Predictions are often wrong, but in this video, I'm going to look back on my picks and give out the awards if the season ended today. Here are the midseason NBA award winners, starting with Rookie of the Year. In my previous video, I made it a point to say that Victor Wembanyama would not win this award. I thought Victor would need to adjust to the NBA game and that Scoot Henderson would win due to opportunity and NBA readiness. Halfway through the season, it looks like Victor will not win this award, but not for the reasons I anticipated. Wembanyama has been incredible thus far. At 7'4", he's averaging 19 points, 10 rebounds, a steal, and 3 blocks. He does have his caveats though. His shooting splits aren't anything to gloat over, and he is being held back by San Antonio's lack of quality guard play. It is not Scoot Henderson who's going to win this award though. On a struggling Blazers team, Scoot has come off the bench in most games. In those games, he's averaging about 12.5 points, 5 assists, and 3 turnovers a game. Henderson is also shooting the ball at a pretty abysmal rate. I'm still excited about how Scoot projects long term, but he was not as NBA ready as I expected. The midseason rookie of the year is actually Chet Holmgren. After missing all of last year due to a list frank injury, the former number two overall pick has been a phenomenal addition to the Thunder. Holmgren is averaging 18 points, 8 rebounds, and 2.7 blocks. Holmgren is also an elite defender, but what really stands out is his efficiency. He's shooting 54% from the field, 41% from three, and 83% from the line. Chet's elite two-way skill set is one of the main reasons why the Thunder are second in the West right now. Next is most improved. My preseason pick was Mikel Bridges. After being traded to Brooklyn in February, Bridges finished the 2023 season with 27 games, averaging 26 points a game. I expected Bridges to continue that production, but that has not been the case. This year, Mikel has continued his streak of incredible durability while averaging 21 points a night. Bridges has good numbers, but it's not the leap I was expecting. Instead, the award goes to Tyrese Maxey. James Harden's trade demands left question marks in Philly. Would the Sixers have another star to pair with Joel Embiid? Turns out, they already had one in Tyrese Maxey. With an increased usage rate, Maxey's scoring has jumped from 20 to 26 points a game. The former Kentucky guard will likely make his first all-star team this season, and right now, he's the most improved player. Now, for the most valuable player. Before the season, I thought Giannis Antetokounmpo would be the MVP. The Bucks were humiliated in the first round by the 8th seeded Heat last year, and I expected Giannis to be hyper-motivated. He has been elite thus far, and the Bucks are second in the East, but I am going elsewhere with this award. Midway through the season, Shea Gilgis-Alexander is the MVP. Last year, Shea emerged as an All-NBA superstar. This year, he has improved even more, and he is now on a winning team. Shea is third in the league in points per game at 31, averages six boards, six and a half assists, and a league leading 2.6 steals a night. SGA is doing this while shooting 55% from the field and averaging less than two turnovers a game. Embiid is having another impressive season, but he has already missed seven games. Shea has missed just one. Luka Doncic is putting up great stats, but the Mavericks are seventh in the West. OKC is second. Nikola Jokic is also playing at an MVP level, but the Thunder have a slightly better record than Denver. If the season ended today, I think Shea Gildas Alexander would be the MVP due to his production on both ends of the ball and the Thunder's success without another true star. My preseason pick for Defensive Player of the Year was also Giannis. However, today it is without a doubt Rudy Gobert. Minnesota is the number one team in the West, and much of that is because of their elite defense. The T-Wolves have the number one defensive rating in the league and allow the fewest points per game. Minnesota has great defensive wings and guards along the perimeter, but Gobert anchors the team in the paint. Gobert is well on track to win his fourth depoy. Now, sixth man of the year. I predicted that Malik Monk would win the award. Monk has been a great spark plug off the bench for Sacramento, averaging 14 points a game. However, Austin Reeves would win the award today. Not only is Reeves averaging 15 points off the bench, he's offering playmaking that other candidates such as Monk and Tim Hardaway Jr. just don't provide. Finally, Coach of the Year. My preseason pick was Denver coach Michael Malone. I projected the reigning champs to be the number one seed out west, but that has not been the case. The Nuggets are not playing to their full potential, mostly due to injuries to star guard Jamal Murray. Instead, I have Chris Finch as the midseason coach of the year. The Timberwolves have been incredible this year. Last year, people argued that the Gobert trade could be the worst trade of all time. It looked like the team had traded a gauntlet of draft picks for a player that could not coexist with franchise cornerstone Carl Anthony Towns. 
Not only has Finch figured out how to play Towns and Gobert simultaneously, he convinced Towns that Anthony Edwards is the franchise player. He convinced Towns to take a back seat. What Finch has done with Minnesota is remarkable, and he is the midseason coach of the year. So if the season ended today, these are my award winners. Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree with my picks, or let me know if you disagree. Like always, I'm Lance with Ball Withdrawal. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, keep an eye out for future videos, and I'll see you then. Thanks.